We've been covering here extensively the Amazon union election that's happening in Alabama right now. Incredibly significant in part because it's the South, but mostly because it is Amazon and they have been aggressively and very successfully busting each and every union organizing effort that has come so far. Those workers are voting um, right now and notably absent from making his support known in this whole thing is Joe Biden. Um, this piece out in the Huffington Post, they note that President Joe Biden, Sagar, considers himself to be a union man mm -hmm. from belt buckle to shoe sole. But when it has come to this extraordinarily significant union election, some are saying the most significant in decades, some are saying the most significant since the, since the New Deal era, he has been notably silent. Yeah, and look, this is a big choice for them. And it's a very much a test of rhetoric versus policy, which is, it's kind of a problem. Your former spokesperson, former White House press secretary, Jay Carney, is literally global vice president of communications at Amazon. There are a lot of ex-Obama people who work at Amazon. And Jeff Bezos is a huge donor to Democratic causes, and so is his ex-wife, Mackenzie Bezos. Post. Not to mention the owner of the paper of who lives literally is in the head of every single White House official. So <laughs> what are you going to do? Are they going to back this or not? And listen, I think that their silence, at least to this point, they've already, I mean, Biden met with those union representatives. He took a little bit on the chin for the Keystone stuff. But at the end of the day, he has not come out forcefully on this in a way where the White House's word and attention could very much make a difference here. The fact that, it, I mean, and also, what does it tell you about the press? Has anybody really even asked about this as a White House press briefing? Mm. Has anyone questioned Mr. Biden called himself a union man? Does he support the unionization? No, we haven't seen anything on that. So. And, and it's come to the attention of, yeah. of the union that's involved in this organizing effort, the Retail Wholesale and Department Store Union. Um, their president said, I think it's important for the administration to demonstrate during this campaign its support for unionization. This is the largest campaign in many years, and this is a great opportunity for them to show working people what's important to them. Now, the Biden people want to hide behind, like, oh, maybe it wouldn't be proper because ultimately this could come to the NLRB and we have to stay neutral. That is such a bunch of baloney. And by the way, right-wingers never no. worry about overstepping <laughs> yes. in ways that have at times been, in my opinion, illegal, where they've even threatened workers. Remember the Volkswagen mm -hmm. organizing drive in Tennessee where um, they even threatened workers like, oh, they promised them, oh, if you don't unionize, we're going to get you more work. Subtext being, if right. you do, this plant may leave the state. They're happy to weigh in on that. And this article makes the comparison to Ronald Reagan, yeah. who famously weighed in on the air traffic controllers dispute against the union. And that really did set the tone mm -hmm. for decades of union busting and absolute hostility from the right and sort of antipathy from the Democratic Party with regards to unions. So look, if you think about this over the past few decades since the Bill Clinton era, since the DLC era, Democrats have basically sort of sort of supported unions rhetorically when it's convenient they'll support them but they haven't actually done anything to back them and stop the slow um slow drain of union workers and union members in the society this is an important test for him to get out there yep. go you know go meet these workers go make it public that you support this drive and the level of public attention also that that would come with is highly significant. And it's, you don't have to comment on it, but there are a million ways that these things work. Invite one of them to the White House for mm -hmm. a meeting, or even um, not even a meeting with the president, maybe a meeting with some, with uh, the vice president, right? Or with the you know secretary of labor, something like that. There are a million ways to signal, sig signal support for something without outright being like, we are you know 100% behind this. And I think it tells you a lot that it's not happening. Well, and the last thing I'll say is a lot of uh, union leaders back Joe Biden yes. in the Democratic primary in spite of the fact that, you know, Biden has said he supports unions, but people like Bernie Sanders were actually out there on the picket lines. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference between those two things where you were, are willing to politically signal whatever's convenient for you in terms of your election and when you're really out there walking the walk. And so now when it comes down to it and there's this incredibly significant and possibly historic effort underway, 
He's silent, and I guess we shouldn't be that surprised. No, we shouldn't. And look, I was just looking at some new polling on blue-collar workers and union voters in particular, and there has been a massive swing that we saw in 2016 and happened again in 2020 with current GOP party identification. And I'm not saying that it's all because of this. I think it's largely culture. But this stuff makes a difference on the margins, and people will remember if you were with them or not. If you stay silent, you're just going to continue that acceleration. Indeed. All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.